So I just want to welcome all of you to this session on the Symphony of the Hawaiian Birds. And I'm so delighted to be joined by these great folks. Uh, and I'm going to I'm going to read their bios. Um, we'll go in reverse alphabetical order, just for, for kicks. Makanani Salah is executive director of the Mayor's Office of Culture and the Arts. Mele and Hula run deep in her life and family. And as an educator in the University of Hawaii system, Makanani created a new hula, which was taught to students across the island, who then performed it as part of the Symphony of the Hawaiian Birds concerts. Dr. Melissa Price, there she is. Uh, is an assistant professor of wildlife management in the Department of Natural Resources and Environmental Management at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. Dr. Price was the co-originator of the Symphony of the Hawaiian Birds Project, along with Dr. Takuma Ito and Charlotte Frambra Kritzer, and provided scientific expertise. Next up is Dave Moss. There's Dave. He is in his second season as the executive director of this Hawaii Symphony Orchestra, having joined the symphony in 2020, just as the pandemic hit. Dave has been an out of the box thinker and great arts leader, developing new ways to reach audiences and serve our communities. While his predecessor, Jonathan Parrish, presided over the first iteration of the Symphony of the Hawaiian Birds project, Dave has embraced the project and its next iteration whatever that is. Laura Margulies is next. There she is. Laura is assistant professor at the University of Hawaii at Manoa in the Academy for Creative Media, where she teaches animation. Laura produced the animations for the Symphony of the Hawaiian Birds and <laughs> actually directed, excuse me, one of the animations, Noka Juliao, in collaboration with me, composer John Magnuson. Uh, Alex Kauhini. There she is. Alex is an elementary public school teacher currently teaching music at Aikahi Elementary in Kailua. In 2018-19, Alex and her grade four team embarked on a years-long exciting journey with the Symphony of the Hawaiian Birds project. And finally, Dr. Takuma Ito. Uh, there he is with the piano in the background. And I think we'll be able to hear some piano as we go along. Um, he is an associate professor of music at the Department of Music at the University of Hawaii at Maanoa. Dr. Ito was the co-originator of the Symphony of the Hawaiian Birds project, along with Dr. Melissa Price and Charlotte Frambois Kritzer and provided music expertise. And, you know, I was coached on that last name, and I apologize, Charlotte Frambaugh Kritzer. I think I said it right there. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to reach first out to, you know, we want to know what is the Symphony of Hawaiian Birds? And, and um, you know, the, the other question is, how did it come about? And I think uh, Takuma and, and Melissa can speak to that. Yeah, so I was driving into work one day listening to NPR and there was a piece on turning data into sound. And I got to thinking about uh, an unpublished chapter of my dissertation and uh, <laughs> which some of us have lingering around and um, had this idea for capturing you know, what happens when things go extinct and they get replaced by other things and how the sounds change over time. So this was the idea. I then got into UH, Googled who the composers were and emailed a couple of them. And within 11 minutes, Takuma wrote me back. And so from there, uh, Takuma has just made an amazing thing of this that we often have trouble communicating, which is what we've lost, what we have yet to save and what people can do to help. And so with that, I'll turn it over to Takuma. Yeah, so it, it's been a, an amazing journey uh, getting to know Melissa and, uh, and, and being part of this project. So I think as musicians, we, we have this privileged life of creating music and, and for me, writing notes for our really amazing musicians to, to play. 
but sometimes there's an empty feeling inside of us uh, where it feels like we, we should be doing more and there's there's something more that impactful that we could do. So when I got this email from uh, Melissa, uh, this, this seemed like the perfect opportunity to, to come up with something. Uh, what, what we could do, I wasn't sure, and I, um, I'm very grateful that the Hawaii Symphony uh, was able to come on board and uh, collaborate with us on this big project that ended up uh, taking place. So, yeah, we had so many ideas of um, what we could do, if, especially if the Hawaii Symphony was on board. And so what we invent eventually settled on was this education concert where we could bring in uh, thousands of kids uh, every year from, from around uh, Oahu mostly and, and uh, have them come here the Hawaii Symphony, uh, but not just the, uh, not just here regular children's concert, but something that's created here by local composers, artists, uh, and uh, tell a story about uh, our own uh, species here. So uh, I thought this was a really innovative and some uh, something new that hadn't really been done elsewhere, and I really enjoyed uh, being just a part of it. Yeah. Thank you. That. That's, um, gosh, you know, both of you spoke so succinctly about it. And yet being there on stage, that first, that first concert and seeing, just experiencing um, the, the wealth of, of um, energy uh, just seems like there's so much more to say in, in how it happened. And, and there, were, there were education uh, folks that, contributed to the the effort um and so so i guess um so maybe maybe next we'll we'll maybe get into who speaking to our you know our stakeholders here uh about um what was their involvement in the project and was there anything that maybe you know that inspired or or surprised you about the project as it as it uh, took shape and as it um, as 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 it uh, became you know something real, um, Alex. Yes, so I come from a very musical family, and uh, when I saw Symphony of the Birds and all of the things that you were offering already done for my teaching team, I was so excited. I had never seen anything homegrown that had so many wonderful resources already available. A lot of times uh, teachers have to create their own local products. So there's a lot you know, available um, outside of local, but this was a local product, local, music, local birds, everything that the fourth grade curriculum, let's be honest, is just going to be gaga over. And when my team saw it, we said we are running full blast into this project. So we took the entire year really as Symphony of the Birds and we did a we did May Day projects. I wrote to a few of the composers and I said, oh my gosh, I just love your music so much. Is it possible to use it as backing for our May Day project? And we did that. We told the story of the Ohia. Our kids studied rapid Ohia death the whole year. They dressed up as birds. I mean, we went full blast and the kids, knew that they were making a difference. And I think that's the piece that is probably the most inspiring to me. So at the end of this uh, performance, which Takuma was able to come, I know you guys are so busy. I was so excited that he got to come to our May Day and the birds were there and uh, Pele came out and you know, Pele, she did her thing. And um, at the end, they said, we have to do a PSA. We have to tell all the people about Rod. So they had a little chant going on. Here are all the things that you have to do. And then the next, uh, when the kids were seventh graders, one of them came back to me and they said, Miss Kohini, Miss Kohini, did you hear? Did you hear? I said, what? He said, it's on the decline. I said, what? Rod, he said, I think part of it is because of us. And I said, 100% part of it is because of us. 
And to have that piece from a fourth grader, to think about that all the way for three years, to know that the thing that they did, what they studied, the music, the art, all of that together, they are now activists for something that is so close to their heart. I mean, I've cried over this piece many, many times when I've come to the concert, I cry I, when you guys explain all of the workings that you did together, the talents that you're bringing together. I'm just, this is exactly as an educator, what I want my kids to do every day in the classroom. So I just, I, I'm kind of fangirling because I just have such great respect for all of you and the work that you've done for students in Hawaii. And I say, let's keep, let's just have Symphony of the Birds every year. Let's make it bigger. I hear iteration, different ones. So I am, I am here for it and I love it. And I, I speak for many people that have come, my family that has come to see it. And I just thank you from the bottom of my educator heart for doing so much work to make it accessible for us. And that is key. You have to know that's key. So thank you so much. I appreciate all of you so very much. I'm not gonna cry. Alex, thank you. That that just, that makes me, <laughs> um, you know, and I, I was gonna ask uh, how, how many of your colleagues um, feel the same way as you. And I, I think, you know, as I was there, I could see it. I, I could see it and that the students were just so, so excited, especially those who got to perform. Um, uh, Dave, I'm gonna hand it to you. You know, um, I think, you know, your, your experience in the project has been limited, but you, I mean, as an executive director of, a, you know, our major symphony orchestra, our only symphony orchestra, the oldest uh, west of the Rockies, um, how, how important was that, that the, the symphony was involved? Well, let me start by, by saying thanks for involving me in this conversation. Um, since I wasn't there for the, the original iteration for this, I got to come in this project, uh, as uh, a learning opportunity for myself. I was new to Hawaii. Uh, the pandemic was setting in, um, you know, I was taking every opportunity to immerse myself in Hawaiian culture and the language and surround myself with, um, you know, my own board of directors uh, that kind of were able to help me guide my way through learning about the people and place. And so the Symphony of the Hawaiian Birds actually served for me that role. Uh, to learn how hula could integrate with a symphony orchestra, uh, to learn about uh, the birds and the ecology here, um, and then also to get to know the phenomenal composers that are all based here. So for me, it was it was educational as well. You know, when we start to talk about what the mission of a symphony orchestra is, that's something that's changed uh, over the last hundred years, and I hope it's something that's going to rapidly change uh, over the next decade here as to what is our mission as a symphony orchestra because it goes beyond just entertainment. You know, we have social responsibility, we have cultural responsibility, economic and environmental. And so to find a piece that we can uh, educate not only the fourth graders, but uh, the children in our adults as well on all of these important issues speaks so wholly to what our mission is as a symphony orchestra. The other aspect of this that's really important to the Hawaii Symphony Orchestra is, is that it's reflective of this community. You know, we are, as we program our masterworks and as we program all of our educational programming, asking ourselves, why is this important here? So to move away from being a European-centric orchestra or an American-centric orchestra and really truly being a Pacific-centric orchestra and to have this uh, Symphony of the Hawaiian Birds as the model, um, we're able to look at even older repertoire. This week we're doing Peter and the Wolf, we're doing it in Olelo, Hawaii, we're doing it in Hawaiian, we're doing it in Tahitian, we're being reflective of the communities that are here. Um, but to have this piece that, you know, from scratch uh, that was put together with so many important uh, shareholders of the community uh, speaks volumes for us as an organization. I think the last part that I, I will point to is uh, to have living composers and to have living educators and all of these people at our fingertips so that when the world shuts down, as it did March 15th of 2020, we could reach out to the team and say, all right, this is still important to us. How do we switch this to virtual? 
you know, how do we use the archival recording? How do the educators, Takuma and his team really put together uh, digital resources so that we could continue this through the early months of the pandemic. And, you know, the symphony did not have the kind of digital arsenal that we would have hoped to going into the pandemic, but through a tremendous amount of creativity uh, and a wonderful team here, we were able to adjust those assets so that this could remain part of the uh, education curriculum for the community here. So we are eager to partner uh, with everyone involved on the next iteration of this and find meaningful ways for us to leverage this, not just here in Hawaii, but outside of Hawaii through our colleagues at the League of American Orchestras and internationally as well. Thank you, Dave. Yeah, that, that reminded me, you know, uh, back in March, 2020, I think Takuma, you, you and I were in touch. You had asked for a video uh, just sort of as, as a, uh, an explanation uh, that could be included in the the um, package, and that package was was not insignificant. Um, could you, Takuma, just just so that you could give a little um, story about that before we move on to our, our oh next... um, yeah it's it's, um, it's just like Dave explained uh, we wanted to create some online content we had a concert planned in the spring of 2020 that we had to cancel. So um, yeah, we, we try to come up with um, some additional resources for teachers and students to be able to use. Uh, I don't think we've finished it quite uh, on time as we'd like, but um, yeah, it's still up on, on, on our website so that uh, it's mostly for music educators uh, to just, uh, and, and uh, each composer goes through what, what's under, un, underlying in uh, each, each of the movements um, and just gives you a little bit of extra information about uh, each instrument, uh, uh, featured instruments of, of like an oboe or flute and what kinds of sounds they make and that how they're featured in the piece. So. Mm, thank you. So, um, Melissa, this was uh, incredibly moving for those of us who are not scientists to hear the scientists speak at the concert, uh, that first concert, and and to to really hear their call uh, about the the um, the importance of of paying attention to what's going on. Um, how how uh, how did your work? sort of evolve as, you know, after that phone call with Takuma, uh, <laughs> um, you know, and with your other uh, scientists, uh, perhaps you can speak a little bit about the, the Bishop Museum field trip that we all met, went to as well. Sure, so we have, a <clears throat> we have a broad array of expertise of folks working in forest bird recovery programs across our state. And they were really excited for the opportunity to work with these teams because they're they're facing an uphill battle in that um, all of our native forest birds don't occur at sea level anymore. So most people haven't seen them, haven't experienced them because of avian malaria uh, that's carried by invasive mosquitoes. And so most of our kids haven't even seen native birds before. So they were really excited about the opportunity to educate folks and it was so much fun to work with the art teams. So we formed these teams of three that included, sometimes a little bit more than three, but they included three components, the composer, uh, the artist, and the scientist. And so one really cool thing as a scientist watching the end products is that the birds aren't in generic trees, they're in ohia trees. You know, you recognize the plants and um, the uh, courtship rituals and the other things that are happening with the birds are true to the birds' behaviors. And so it was really cool that the kids, they probably don't even realize this, but when they're watching the birds, they're actually seeing real things that the birds do and interact with in the ecosystems. And so they're learning through so many different forms, not just the lesson plans that were created by Charlotte, um, but also the, uh, the, the media and, and the visual media and then hearing and feeling it. Because I think that's the final thing is, is um, you mentioned how moving it was for non-scientists. Um, in, in 2017 and 18, the Kahuli, the Hawaiian tree snails that I had been working with since 2012, almost nearly all the populations just dropped out, just disappeared from the mountains due to climate change and, and predators. 
that was devastating for me, but it's hard to convince people why it hurts to see a snail go extinct. <laughs> and so to have folks feel that feeling of that relationship with the natural world through the music, through the art. Um, it was just so beautiful to help communicate um, what is happening in the world and then move people to action. Thank you, Melissa. Um, let's see, next up, uh, Makanani. Um, could you describe your involvement in the project and, and uh, you know, what, what inspired you? or surprised you? Yeah, sure. Um, so I was invited to to write, oh, well, to choreograph a hula, but there was no hula. So I, I wrote a melody from scratch, um, something simple that would be doable for elementary school children. I think for me, this this project was really groundbreaking because you don't you don't get this kind of collaboration like like anywhere, right? So you had the symphony, you had the, you had scientists, you had conservationists, you had elementary school, you had, you know, all different levels really working together to pull together this product. And for me, I didn't see the end result until the actual day of the concert. Um, but if you think about it, the music piece and, you know, the, the culture piece is really what sort of held everything together as glue. Um, and I think that's the thing, like um, Melissa was saying, that, that makes the message so powerful, right? Brings together the conservation piece, the education piece into something that you can feel and you can express. And I think the students really, um, they really fed off of that. And I got to actually work with a lot of the, the student teachers and teachers in the DOE. So I taught them and then they went on and taught their students. Um, and it was an educational piece for them too, because I think for them to learn that this kind of collaboration is possible, you just need to get the right people in the room. Like the work amplifies and it makes it so much easier um, when we all work together, you know, just doing what we know and what we're good at we can all do such great projects. Yeah, that was that was really incredible to see that that performance that was not only the the students on stage, but it was in the audience as well. Yeah, that was that was incredible. And I think, you know, just leveraging the power of the UH system just to, you know, you have student teachers mm -hmm. teach them and then they they become the teachers. Uh, yeah, absolutely. And I think, you know, when I when I looked out and I saw all the kids dancing, the hula, they were so excited, right? Because they're not all going to necessarily learn how to play the oboe or, or they might not all appreciate the music or certain science pieces, but there was a piece from that concert that every child could take away. Uh, so I think that was the most powerful, but to see them all dancing in unison, um, really to me is nation building. It's sort of a form of sovereignty as well, right? Is that we can all do this together, never mind where we come from, what we do. We all came together and put our energy toward this one project and you know, learning about these birds and you know, perpetuating this knowledge to our families as well. Hmm. And you know, in many ways, they were performing for the members of the symphony who were right behind them. So how proud they must have been. Uh, you know, it just reminds me um, back in 2007, 2008, um, I actually had served as the director of education at the symphony, uh, and we used to do Link Up, which is a Carnegie Hall uh, program, and we created our own, you know, uh, arrangement of a melee that the students came up and actually performed, and that just, that's so powerful for them to own, and, and uh, incredible. Uh, thank you, Makanani. Uh, so Laura, um, that artwork was amazing. All of that artwork that we saw and it, it just, I think it was inspiring to see these stories that the scientists were telling visually. Uh, can you talk a little bit about how, how that happened? Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, I just also wanna say that, you know, to uh, echo what everyone else is saying that it was a really, um, magical ride to be a part of, you know, with so many people participating and it culminating in this, these big events and, you know, having the students be, you know, arriving at the performance with this, you know, knowledge that they had already been, you know, they'd already been educated and they came, you know, with expectations and they came excited to, 
to perform and to dance the hula and they they also had done artwork which you know was part of the program and um so all of those like participatory things with this with the students and the families and the teachers i think was was extra special but um in terms of creating the animations um after the initial idea you know got off the ground i sort of reached out and uh, reached out to certain local animators to see who would want to be involved and and i found some people that were very excited to be a part of this project and takuma assigned us each you know different stories or different birds that we should work with and and we you know matched up with different composers and then we just you know began the creative process of, of working with our composer and trying to um, find visuals. And each animator, you know, came up with a completely different storyline. Some had, you know, sort of a cute story, some had sort of more of an abstract story, some were, um, and they were done in all different techniques. So my role was just sort of to check in with each, each group and see, you know, what kind of support they needed. Sometimes we would get assistant animators that would um, help to create the pieces. Um, and yeah, it was just really fun to watch the the artwork and the animations evolve. And I think they worked well together in the end, ultimately, and, and each piece was, you know, each animation was created in conjunction with this original music, which was an extra extra special experience. That's terrific. Now, how how many of the animators actually had collaborated in a in in a situation like this? Ah, yeah, that's a good question. And as we've been saying, you know, this kind of collaboration is sort of few and far between. So, I think people have worked in you know to some in some area some degree of collaborative projects. But I think none of us had ever worked in such a an ambitious collaboration. You know, this was so far reaching with so many different um, institutions and groups and people involved and, and it, yeah, so it was, it was quite a wonderful experience for everyone. And, you know, the students were moved, but we were also moved by what we learned, you know, by doing the research for the pieces and um, diving into this subject, so. Yeah, yeah, it was incredible. Takuma, um, can you speak? On behalf of the musicians, I, I I'm not going to take my hat off. I, I I want to hear, you know, and perhaps you got a lot of feedback from the the other composers who were involved. Um, what was the general sort of? Um, I know it wasn't easy to put put the project together, but you you really um, you you made the music part happen, and. Well, um, it was just, I, I knew a few other composers on the island, uh, and we had a very short time timeline to finish this project. So I just said, hey, uh, do you want to work with, uh, the, do you want to write a piece for the Hawaii Symphony? And it's going to be about, uh, you're going to be working with animators, and uh, it's going to be performed for in front of thousands of kids. And it wasn't a hard sell. And once I once the, each person had their assignment, uh, I, I they just did their own thing. So uh, it, was, it was kind of fun to just put together everyone and just uh, see what would happen. So I never saw the final product until um, right before the, the dress rehearsal or so, uh, and yeah, we had no idea how it would all come out really, um, and we we. I wasn't even sure the, the kids were going to show up, uh, even though I'd been in contact with them. So, um, <laughs> so the music, yeah, it was, it was a, uh, I think for, even for the artists and musicians, it's just this um, mission of doing something uh, that's, that seems greater than each of us, uh, that goes beyond uh, just um, our pro own projects and uh, kind of contribute to the, the greater community. That was a rare opportunity, and it, was, it wasn't a hard sell. To, to convince people to join us. Yeah, you know, I recall, I'm recalling uh, there was a moment there and perhaps Laura, you, uh, you also met this, every, every composer has their, you know, their own sort of way of presenting a score. Uh, so, you know, this was a symphony that we were all writing together and multiple movements. So how do we, 
uh, how do we do you know simple things like you know with the end of the first movement what um, what becomes the second movement and make sure that we have the same sort of type setting or, or you know all of all of those sort of details um, yeah ta Takuma do you, do you want to share about how how that experience was those are very nuts and bolts kind of issues <laughs> well I, I don't think it ended up mattering too much we uh, even though it's a, a symphony I think we we all all each uh, own our own works um, so it's not like suddenly this one single piece um, it exists that yeah. so it's not it's not it wasn't anything um, the, the structure of this piece is unusual but I think uh, that nuts and bolts ended up not being as impo uh, as uh, in, not important but uh, we didn't have to worry about it so much mm. uh, luckily um, is. We, did, we did work with Kim, the librarian. She mm -hmm. was. She oh, I'm sure it was a nightmare different. for her. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and just you know, when you think about the the symphony musicians on stage from movement to movement, the percussion, uh, which is the most sort of volatile section, right? They're 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 playing so many different instruments, and from movement to movement, uh, each had it's different requirements so. yeah i guess yeah that maybe could have been a problem but luckily we didn't run into that and uh, i guess we uh, had some time between each movement so uh, they had some time to to move around their instruments because there's a, a narration in between uh, each of the movements so that they could explain what was happening um, and then also have the hula in the middle as well so there were plenty of breaks in between for the percussionists to, to move their instruments around yeah. luckily yeah okay and and thanks Takuma so Laura um were there any sort of analogous situations with uh, the um you know just practical considerations of creating a, a like a film of different animations um not really you know just like the different musical pieces the we knew that the animations would be different from each other and so we were we were expecting that and it was sort of uh you know kind of exciting to see how they would turn out and how they would look all together and um you know we just believed that they would work <laughs> and they did so uh and you know as takuma said we had the narrator really helped to connect all of the different parts in the in the whole piece and the you know fading to black in between and then you know coming up fading onto the new the new animations with the new sound you know people were prepared for another another story so yeah i think it worked out oh i guess i would mention uh, one thing that was not, not an issue but I, um, for the conductor of jeff bachman um, he had to figure out when he would start conducting uh, and how uh, he, there was no click track, so he really had to learn the animation and the tempo uh, so that it wouldn't get off track with what was happening. So, uh, yeah, I think he still has nightmares about uh, going off. <laughs> but, uh, uh, yeah, these are lessons that we learned. And, uh, and so some, some of the animations had to start before the music and some of them started with the music. And, uh, so, so that, was, yeah, that was a case where the dress rehearsals were crucial. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> right? But we had very few rehearsals. I'm, I'm so amazed that, that the concert came off as well as it did. <laughs> yeah, and that, that's just a testament to the preparation, not only of Jeff Bachman, but, but to our symphony musicians who are just incredible. We are so blessed. Um, can, I, can I just yeah. quick jump in, you know, and, and just comment on that, you know, um, ballet companies uh, rehearse five days a week, six days a week together um, and for months up until a show. Um, but I think it's important uh, to, to note that, you know, as you just said, it was really, you know, to have the team together and to provide something where uh, I'm going to guess there was probably one, maybe two rehearsals. So maybe four hours of rehearsal time in total before the symphony would perform this for the kids. Um, it's, it's really 
it's phenomenal. As you said, our musicians and also the work that was done ahead of time by the team to make that seamless. And it's certainly a learning process, um, you know, making adjustments as you go. Um, but then it's it's in the repertoire now. So, you know, our orchestra can play this, uh, you know, with, with very little notice um, to really share this as wide as we can with the community. Thanks, Dave. Yeah. Um, so, and you mentioned what, what we learned and, and I think I'm just going to put this out to everyone, you know, what, what did we learn? What were some of the things that we learned with, with this huge project? Well, one thing is not to be scared of undertaking these ambitious projects. I mean, not that I was in charge, <laughs> but I was involved and, um, and I was so happy to be involved because it, it was so positive in so many ways. That's awesome. I, I think one of the things that made it hugely successful is if you look around at this room of people, you know, you had experts in each of these areas doing what they do best. And so even though I have been a high school teacher before, I didn't try to write the curriculum. You know, we had an expert in interdisciplinary curriculum that somehow designed a set that could be adapted for everything from grades four through 12. That's amazing. And then the team that Takuma pulled together of the composers and that Laura pulled together for the animators. And Makanani, I don't know how much of the conversation you had with the composers, but one pointed out to me once the elements of of the chant that show up later as themes in the music. So, you know, it wasn't like everyone just sat there and did their own thing. There was this back and forth amongst people, the conversations and learning how even each person is benefited. How much should Takuma be paid? How much should an animator be paid? I had no idea prior to this what would properly value their contributions. So it was a humbling learning experience, but also we had just amazing people show up and do what they do best. Thank you, Melissa. Yeah, Any, yeah. Anyone else? Yeah, Takuma. For me, it was just, um, it felt like everyone was doing me, like uh, we, had, we had this idea, but it was asking, can you do this for very little compensation? And everyone just kept saying yes. Um, and we had all these ideas of, can we really do this? Can we have an art contest on top of all that we're doing? Can we, um, can we do a hula? And, and uh, can we have our music education students go out to the schools? Uh, apparently, yes. So, so it was, <laughs> uh, it seemed like I was asking way too much of everyone in the community, but then they all kept, kept saying yes. So. Um, it was, uh, uh, yeah, it felt like this snowball effect of, uh, of good things happening and I almost had no control over it. <laughs> I think people want to help, you know, they want to be involved in something, in something so good. So it was, you know, wonderful that you made the opportunity available for people to be involved. Thank you, Laura. Uh, Alex. At one of at one of the concerts that we were at, when all of you were in front of the stage and each person just said a little bit about what they did, um, to me as an educator, I just said, this is, you know, like I said before, this is everything we want for students. So I then took that back to my students and I said, let me tell you what really had to happen, how many people that are experts in their fields got to work with other people that they would never normally, you know, even be in the same room with. I said, is this not the most exciting thing we've ever seen? And they said, it's just like us. We're really good at some things. And then we get to work in a group together and we appreciate each other. And I'm like, ah, yes, yes. And look, the big people too. And they, um, they got it. And, you know, sometimes you think kids aren't, kids aren't going to notice that, but you know, top of the field, you guys are just so amazing. And to be so humble at what you're doing and create such an amazing product that, you know, will live on in infamy. But the process, I think for me, was what was even beyond the work was that you guys put in the time you put in the work, you appreciate each other's gifts and passions. And um, 
you know, that's a, that's amazing to me. I just, I love everything about that. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'll jump on that. I, I got to second that. And really, it's a testament to you guys, you know, and Takuma and those, all of you who really, because um, it really wasn't about, like, I, I couldn't say no when you came to ask me because it was such a great project. And it was like, we're all so busy. It's so easy to just be like, no, I don't just go ask someone else. But I think when you sold the project to us, it really wasn't about, you know, it wasn't about any of us as an individual. It's like, this is the right thing to do. And if we all sort of do our little piece, it's going to be great. So I think really the leadership was really well done. And, you know, it was so thank you for inviting me. And I'm very happy to have been a part of this project. Yeah, incredibly powerful when when individuals work together and create something greater than themselves. Um, you know, th there was a point there where, um, where we all got news that it was gonna be taken on by, I think the Utah Symphony. And, and that really, you know, that, that made my heart jump a little bit because, wow, you know, this is spreading its wings. Um, the, does anybody want to describe the reach of the project so far, and and uh, you know just just what maybe the impact that it's had? Takuma, you want to go, or you want me to take this? I mean, we don't really know. I mean, hearing <laughs> Alex talk about this today, I'm hearing all these things from her perspective and her, from the students' perspective for the first time. Uh, we don't know the effects of, uh, of fourth graders coming to this concert uh, for a long time. Uh, maybe uh, when they come to UH, maybe they'll they'll talk about it to us. Um, <laughs> so it's the effect we don't know, uh, but it's, it's something we planned it so that it could be performed multiple times, but we weren't ever sure that it was going to be performed more than once. Um, but uh, it sh just shows you that, that, that a symphony so far away uh, as the Utah Symphony would want to take it on just t t shows you how uh, unique this is and um, I guess for an, an edu educational concert there's not a ton of repertoire available for the orchestra so doing something new something different um, I, I think is, is a great opportunity for orchestras around the, around the country to emulate I, I'm hoping yeah, we've had from numbers we've it's been performed for what about 20,000 kids and people now I think is the number because it was uh, about 10,000 alone I think with the Salt Lake City concert it was their entire fifth grade cohort for the area. Um, and then we also did some surveys before and after um, some uh, with the uh, kids and um, so many of them couldn't name a single native bird prior to attending the symphony and doing the curriculum. And after doing the curriculum and attending the symphony, they could name native birds. So that's pretty amazing um, as far as impact. Um, and beyond that, just helping folks to understand the impact that things we love, like cats, can have on the environment if we don't keep them in our homes where they belong and allow them to go into the environment. So I think there's even some long-term ripple effects of how people feel about um, environmental issues and caring for our birds um, that will bear fruit down the line. Thank you, Melissa and Takuma. And, um, and I guess that brings me to, you know, sort of a, a, a final couple of questions. One is, will the Symphony of Hawaiian Birds return? And, um, and, and if so, when? And what's next? I can, I'll jump in here. I feel like everyone's looking at me. I, I've got the symphony, huh? <laughs> got the, there you go. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, yeah, symphonies are hard to come by. Uh, so when you have one, you got to use it for good things. Um, and so, you know, this is certainly a part of our programming here. Uh, and it's something that, you know, we, the the DOE just passed their fine arts curriculum uh, to the requirements. Um, you know, it's it's long overdue uh, for the state to have those, and so I think the next steps for us as an organization and with a piece like the Symphony of the Hawaiian Birds is to look really closely as to how we can roll that out on a on a much larger scale, um, so that we can. You know, I think the goal is every fourth grader in DOE experiences Symphony of the Hawaiian Birds. Hard stop. <laughs> 
<laughs> so yes. That's incredible. That would be a great, great vision to, to make, make happen. Thanks, Dave. And, and uh, let's see, let's talk about, um, you know, there was, there was, a, um, there, there are inklings of a new project that, that has been inspired by the birds. And I totally want to hear about it. Okay, so uh, we're working currently on uh, Symphony of the Hawaii Forests. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so we're really excited about, uh, and it's 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 well on its way. So we've uh, we have a new batch of composers and animators, and some returning composers and animators, uh, a whole new storytelling uh, team as well. So, uh, and it's an even bigger ambitious project, I think, uh, involving more and more people. But we've learned so much from the original Symphony of the Hawaiian Birds. So um, it's a more complicated uh, set of uh, stories to tell. Um, and so uh, we've, we've taken it very slowly during the pandemic to come, come up with uh, the five or six really important stories that we wanted uh, the, our, our Kiki to, uh, to learn about. That's so, exciting. Yeah. So th so, so, and, and these are, so it's, it's the forest, the symphony of the forest. Right. Of, of the Hawaiian forest? Yes, of course. Yeah. yeah. So Hawaiian <laughs> forest. And so Laura's back, uh, back uh, coordinating uh, the animation team. Melissa's helping out with the, the, the science scientists and uh, storytelling. And uh, we have uh, working with uh, Hala Ohia, uh, with uh, Kikuhi Kanahele and Amy Sato and Malia Hemuli uh, uh, on the storytelling and making sure the, the, these uh, re really important stories are being told. And uh, uh, yeah, Heather McMillan of the Depart uh, Division of Forestry as well, um, who's uh, really partnering with, with me on, on the, the, yeah, uh, how in, in getting this off the ground. So yeah, it's exciting. That is. That's you know uh, the the feeling that I had after the first performance of the the Symphony of the Hawaiian Birds was the, the one that I, I I don't think I I've ever felt before. So it's like a yeah, I want to feel that again. <laughs> so I I want to make sure uh, we get that that uh, this happening again. That's terrific. Now, is is it just the Hawaii Symphony involved, or are there other symphonies involved? Uh, just the uh, Hawaii Symphony for yeah for now. <laughs> yeah. Okay. We've had dreams of you know Symphony of the New Zealand Birds, Symphony of the Australian Birds, Symphony of the you know we would love to franchise this at some point <laughs> and go global. So if anyone has partnerships they want to develop with us, I think we were starting to have some conversations with folks right before the pandemic hit. So maybe those will take off again sometime. Yeah, it's amazing. You know, we do live in a world where, where you know, if if one part of the globe does something, that it it spreads quickly if it's really cool. Um, and that that can be infectious. That's that's very exciting. So, are, are there any other last sort of how how this project and and the the forest project. You know, these kinds of collaborations sort of inform, I know we, you know, we shared about, about what we learned, but um, just are there, are there any, any last thoughts about where this will go? Um, point of view, nine-year-old kid in the seat. So we did a lot of work, used every single resource we had, and when and we did the art, we entered the art contest. We had a few winners, so we were game. We were ready for this day. Looking down, when Craig, looking down the aisle, I did not need to worry about a single kid in that aisle. Oh gosh, are they going to pay attention? They were on the edge of their seats, could not even wait to see what was going to happen, and that again, seeding into them prior is the magical key. And they, they're they invested. And then when they go, they're like, oh gosh, now I'm ready for the next thing. So one of the things they did, you know, we used 
um, Takuma's piece under some narration. And the kid said, oh, let's listen to the piece. Oh, here's where it's tense. This is where Pele should come in. And I'm like, yes, ma'am, that's where Pele should come in. And for a eight, nine, 10 year old to listen to this beautiful brand new piece and take it apart and find that amazing feeling in it is next level. I mean, that is just next level. So I, I'm, I'm here for the forest. I'm here for when we go to the ocean. I'm here, I'm excited. So tell me, tell me how I can help you. I'm here for you. <laughs> That's so terrific. Uh, thank you, Alex. I, you know, it, it almost seems like a shame not to share some of the symphony. Uh, and so I'm, I'm going to ask, and I certainly didn't, didn't ask him uh, before, before now, but Takuma, would it be okay if we shared your, your um, movement? Yeah. Sure. Go ahead. Yeah. I just, I, I think it's really, um, it's, it's one of the most beautiful and most touching for, for our, um, the, for the project. And, and so let's see. Let's see if I can do this. Um, let's see. Wow. 
that was probably one of the one of the most touching. I, I just um, I, I love that every time. I want to thank you all uh, for sharing this time and sharing your thoughts and your expertise. Uh, it's such a wonderful project, and I I am looking forward to the 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 future. Um, and I think to to maybe add on um, to give a little uh, more um, information, Melissa, would you share about the last Akikiki? Sure. Um, I don't want to end on a sad note, but I, as I watched this, you know, at the last uh, Kauai O'o, I think, was seen in maybe 1987. And so for many of the kids and even parents that are attending the symphony, this is something that disappeared long before they had the chance to see it. The EEV was still on Oahu when I was growing up, but I didn't realize it was disappearing. I didn't take the opportunity to go see it when I was a kid. Um, and right now on Kauai, unfortunately, with climate change, the mosquitoes are reaching the highest elevations now on Kauai. And so the places that were refugia for our forest birds that they were able to you know, stay away from avian malaria are, are no longer. And so um, they've been declining pretty rapidly. And so uh, a team just went up about a month ago to try to collect the last Akikiki out of the forest for um, captive breeding, uh, to try to establish maybe populations on other islands or at least in captive breeding until we can control the mosquitoes, which we really can't do too well yet. And so, um, yeah, it, it's, uh, it's a good time for action. It's a good time for thinking about what we can do and realizing that these aren't just stories of the past, but these are stories that the kids could go on to invent a way of controlling mosquitoes to save our birds or you know, other things like that. So it's, it's very timely to think about these things. Sorry, not to end on a sad note, I, I, I think the take home message from this symphony is really that there's so much we can do when we all come together. And so I, I really hold on to hope in a field that sometimes is challenging to maintain hope because I see what can happen when people come together and they each contribute their talents and their skills and the things that they're passionate about. And we can, we can really solve this world's problems when we come together. Melissa, thank you for that. I think that's a really, really good way to end our, our time today. Just, just um, reflecting on, on the reason why the Symphony of Birds of the Hawaiian Birds came about. So thank you all. And, and um, I'll look forward to our next time being together. <laughs>